Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna 122 HD 45 hedge trimmer. Customer complaint is that it just bogs and it won't rev up. So we gave it the old sniff test and uh, yeah I mean it had good fuel in it I guess. Sure is taking a long time to prime though. So that's kind of a bop bop bog. It was starving for fuel. And um, you know it could be the fuel filter. We didn't take it out. We didn't look at it. You know, it could be the fuel hose. We never pressure tested that fuel hose. Uh, certainly a starving for fuel situation could be a tank vent. It could be the fuel pump or it could be the impulse line that runs the fuel pump. It could be the stiff metering diaphragm in the carburetor, or it could even be a uh, plugged up micro screen in the carburetor. Now there might be more things than that, but those are the things I look for. Right now I pulled the top cover off of here for two reasons. One, I always like to look in here and make sure that it's not plugged up because running this hedge trimmer over some bushes with leaves or grass or the clippings, Sometimes they get sucked into the cooling system. So I always like to look at that. The second reason is it makes it easier to pull the spark plug out. So we're going to look in the cylinder and just make sure that any further efforts are worthwhile. If this thing's scored, I'm going to stop. But it looks good. I don't know how well you can see that. But it's clean and shiny. No scratches or scores. We're going to put a new spark plug in because I feel confident that we're going to get this running and back into the hands of the customer. Now certainly uh, a big air leak could be the issue too, but the way it was running and it just bogged and died, I shouldn't say bog because that's a little confusing. It starved for fuel, so it slowly petered out and died. There's kind of a difference. It's subtle, and that's kind of the whole trick here when you're working on these things, is to recognize a symptom and associate it with the actual problem. So I gave you a list of the things I think could be the problem. We're going to start in the tank. Now, this is going to be one of those do as I say and not as I do kind of deals. Because I told you the problem could be the fuel filter and I told you the problem could be the fuel hose. Well, the filter would be dirty and the hose would have a hole in it. And all I really do here is pull this out. Look at the filter. It looks pretty dang clean. I can feel the hose feels pretty soft and supple. It doesn't feel like it's cold and hard or anything like that. But I really should have pressure tested it right there. That would have been the correct way to move forward. But I already got it stuck in my head that the problem's in the carburetor. So, you know, being stubborn, I'll just come back to this if I'm wrong. So let's try it again with some different gas, even though I thought the gas wasn't that bad. Notice how I have to prime it, get fuel back in the carb, and then it'll run till it runs that fuel out of the carb. 
so more fuel is not coming in. And if we eliminate the fuel filter and the fuel line, that leaves issues inside the carburetor. Uh, and it also includes the impulse uh, connection between the crankcase and the carburetor. In this case, it's built into the manifold. In some cases, it's a separate hose. You know, there's times when people buy uh, aftermarket carbs and the gaskets and, and the holes for the impulse line and the carb don't line up or something like that. Um, but I don't think that's the case here. This is the original carburetor. And here I'm just checking the bolts on that manifold, but really, I don't. I didn't even believe they were loose. I just, they were there, so I'd check it. Because I don't think it's an air leak problem. I still think it's in the carburetor. And, you know, this is just an old habit. I scribe the carburetor, so I, I don't have to think about putting it back together. I just line up the scribed line, and there it is. So here's our metering diaphragm, and uh, holy moly, listen to this thing. Yeah, that's a stiff one. So if that metering diaphragm can't move, and it can't push on the metering lever and open the needle and let fuel in, and it's going to starve for fuel. Now, working the primer bulb is forcing fuel in there. And then it would, you know, run a little bit on that fuel. And that's it. Once that fuel ran out, it would die. Quick look on this side of the carburetor just to check the micro screen. And it looks good. And I'm putting the cover back on. Now I know I've said in other videos that anytime I open up the carb, I uh, always put kit in it. Well, this is one of them uh, Rooksing, maybe? I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. I don't have kits for these things. They, uh, they mimic... Um, they're Chinese knockoffs, really. They mimic some other Chinese carburetors that are more popular. So if you know which kit to put in it, that uh, is the same as, say, a Zama kit, uh, then you can slap it in there and you're good to go. But I have a selection of some metering diaphragms laying around that I kind of use just for these situations. I found one that's going to work, except for it's missing one hole. Well, we'll just take a little hole punch and we'll modify it. I mean, this stuff isn't like uh, black magic or anything like that. Just duplicate the gasket that you already have, and, and you should be good to go. Now, certainly, the height of the center of that metal disc that actually pushes on the metering lever, that height has to be the same as your original metering diaphragm. And this one is, you can measure them if you want. So we're going to put it back together. First the uh, standard gasket, then the metering diaphragm gasket. And you'll notice here that I'm not doing anything else. I want you to see the difference in just putting that metering diaphragm in there. I'm not turning any screws. In fact, by the time I get to the end of this repair, I will not have turned a single adjustment screw on here. So it gets this thing uh, buttoned back up. And it goes back on the head trimmer pretty easy. You've got your throttle cable and two fuel lines.
And if you're not sure which line goes where, just hit the primer bulb once. And if fuel's coming out of one of those fittings, then that's the return line that does not have the fuel filter on the other end of it. We got our gasket lined up. Set the carb in place. Get our air filter holder back on there. There we go. That air filter holder does slip underneath the orange top cover. So that's what I was trying to line up there. So we'll give this thing another try. And if it runs, then that's all I'm going to have for you on the Husqvarna 122 HD45 bog, bog, bog needed a metering diaphragm. Thanks for watching. Later. Later.